Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to my hometown, Boca Raton, Florida. This is the start of our storm season, but as you can see today, we have absolutely zero chance of rain today. And in fact, over the next 10 days, we have like zero chance of storms and in the forecast. So not really off to a great start for storm season this year. So hopefully that changes in the coming weeks. So what I thought I'd do is uh, give you a little bit of a look at my hometown. I got to see everybody's uh, hometown during various lockdowns around the world uh, over the last year. So I thought I'd return the favor and let you see a little bit of where I live. Now where I'm standing today is in front of the Intracoastal. The Intracoastal is a mostly man-made waterway that was dug out about 70 years ago. Basically, it just allows boats to travel leisurely up and down the, the coast without actually having to go out to the ocean if they don't want to. All right, guys, I'm about five minutes away from sunrise. I'm starting to get a little bit of color in the clouds here behind me. So I'm going to turn around and focus on getting this first sunrise shot of the week. I hope you'll join me over the next seven days from seven different locations and seven sunrises from Boca Raton, Florida. Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to downtown Boca Raton. I have a mostly cloudless sky again this morning so I thought I'd come down here because it'd be the perfect place where the clouds don't really have to come into play. So I'm in a park called Sanborn Park which is a free speech park and you know every year at the holidays they put up a religious displays, they put up a Christianity display, a Jewish display, a couple other religious displays and one year they even put up a satanic display and just to prove the point that it's a free speech park although it didn't really go over so well because it got vandalized five or six times during the course of a three or four week period but anyway it's a great park here in the middle of uh, downtown so i thought i'd get a couple good shots down here along this pathway right across the street i have the old boca raton uh, town hall which is one of the oldest buildings in all of south florida and uh, now it's the history of boca raton museum and uh, yeah, I might get a couple building shots uh, before I leave here. So thanks for tuning in this morning. Uh, we will see you again tomorrow from a third location if I can get myself out of bed. Hope you enjoy this look at downtown Boca Raton and we'll see you tomorrow. Hey, good morning everybody and welcome back to day three of sunrises here in Boca Raton. I'm down at my local beach, although I'm not on the beach, I'm at a pavilion that I'll show you here in a little bit. I've intentionally tried to stay away from the beach because you see so much of that in my videos, but I'm kind of running into a problem with this project is, and I didn't think about this ahead of time, was that sunrise is about 6.25 in the morning right now and a lot of the places I wanted to shoot at were like local parks and stuff they don't open till like 7 and even in some cases 8 a.m. so I thought well maybe I'll do some sunrise lo or sunset locations uh, same problem with that sunsets not till after 8 p.m. now a lot of these parks are closing down at like 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. so I may be forced to come up with some alternate locations but I will get this done for you so I'm gonna take a couple shots of this pavilion this morning Almost cloudless sky again, and the weather forecast is not getting any better for the rest of the week. You know, I'll probably take a couple shots of this uh, road behind me, which is the world famous A1A. I think that was made famous in a Vanilla Ice song, Ice Ice Baby from back in the late 80s, and maybe a couple other shots from this area. All right, guys, I'm gonna get these shots. I'm about five or 10 minutes away from sunrise, so I will see you again tomorrow morning from, or maybe even tomorrow night, not sure yet, uh, from a different location.
Hey, good morning everybody and welcome back to day four from Boca Raton. It is actually Memorial Day here in the U.S. so I thought I'd come down to my local cemetery here. They just have it decorated so beautifully with all these little American flags on all of the graves of our, uh, our heroes who have fought and served and died for our country. Now I don't want to vlog too much from here today because they're going to be having Memorial Day services here in a little while so I want to get out of the way. But I did want to come down here early take a few pictures of these beautiful flags decorating the graves I have an amazing sunrise happening behind you there so you know to any active personnel military personnel or veterans out there that might be watching thank you so much for your service we can't tell you enough every day how much we appreciate what you've sacrificed for us for everybody else watching thank you so much for tuning in we'll see you again from a different location here in Boca Raton tomorrow thanks guys bye Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome back to day five from Boca Raton. Now, I have to apologize. My idea of doing seven sunrises on seven consecutive days from seven different locations just did not work out at all. Just still too many restrictions in place. Parks not opening early enough or closing too early to be able to get a good sunrise or sunset shot. So, but welcome to day five. And uh, what I thought I'd do today is kind of take you on a video tour of my town and uh, give you a little bit of the history behind Boca Raton. It's a relatively new city, so this shouldn't take too long, so I hope you join me. So let's go. Welcome to Pond Hawk Natural Area. Now this landscape around me is very similar to what the original settlers to this area would have encountered about 1200 years ago. Behind me you have this really tall swampy grassland that would have been filled with alligators and snakes and spiders. And behind you there is this really thick brush that would have been just difficult to get through. Now, the original settlers to this area, there was three major Indian tribes. There was the Tequesta Indians, which were the settlers of this current area. South of us would have been the Miccosukee Indians. And to the west of us, which is now the Everglades, would have been the Seminole Indian tribes. And if you've never read the history of the Seminole Indian tribe, I definitely suggest looking that up. It is some of the most interesting American history that I've ever read. Now, the first non-Native American settlers arrived here in 1895, and their arrival was aided by the completion of the East Coast Railroad Line. And you see one of the old engines and boxcars there behind me, and right behind that is the original Boca Raton train station. In about 1904, about 40 Japanese immigrants arrived here in Boca Raton to work on a pineapple farm. Unfortunately, about two years after their arrival, the disease wiped out all the crops, and most of the Japanese immigrants were gone by about 1920. <laughs> Sorry about that guys, I need to get out of the heat for just a minute. Get under a little bit of cover here. Oh, that's so much better. All right, so where was I? Oh yeah, so 1925, Boca Raton was officially incorporated as a city and construction started on the new town hall. It was designed by a local architect named Addison Meisner. Sometime between 1925 and when it opened in 1927 though, the land boom crashed and Meisner lost everything, went bankrupt, but the town hall plans were still continued on by a different architect. But you know, Meisner had this uh, grand vision of what he wanted Boca Raton to look like, and a lot of it incorporated like a Mediterranean style feel. And you know, most of the houses that are still built here today are built in that style. And you know, his influence is still felt pretty much everywhere you go in Boca Raton with things being named after him like <sighs> Meisner Street, Meisner Park, which is an upscale shopping center here in downtown Boca Raton. And uh, yeah, he just had a vision 100 years ago and it lives on today. So as of 1950, there were still less than a thousand people living here. And I have a theory why. You're not going to find this in any history book. This is just kind of Paul's theory. So hear me out. Air conditioning. Prior to 1950, home air conditionings weren't widely available. As the 1950s went on into the early 1960s, they really developed those original window units, which I'm sure made life so much more comfortable down here. Now you gotta hand it to the original Tequesta Indian settlers and the original non-Native American settlers. Those guys must've been absolute studs to live here all these years without air conditioners, because I couldn't do it. 
1936, the first airport was established here in Boca Raton, and you can see it here behind me. And it was taken over in 1942 by the U.S. Army Air Corps, and they turned it into the only radar training base in the United States for World War II. Welcome to Spanish River Park. Now, the land that this park currently sits on was purchased in 1967 by the IBM Corporation, who built a massive industrial complex whose sole mission was to invent and manufacture the personal computer. Now, one of the men that was at the forefront of the personal computer revolution in the 1970s is probably not exactly who you're thinking of. I'm not talking about Steve Jobs. I'm not talking about Bill Gates. He was an IBM engineer named Don Estridge. In fact, Steve Jobs came here to Boca Raton to offer millions of dollars for Don Estridge to leave IBM and come work for him at Apple, which Don Estridge turned down. Tragically, Don Estridge was killed in 1985 in a Delta Airlines plane crash on a flight from Fort Lauderdale to Dallas. But his legacy definitely lives on here in Boca Raton. Now you can't see it, but just on the other side of those trees is the middle school where my wife works. And appropriately enough, it's named Don Estridge High Tech Middle School. Hey everybody, welcome back to day six from Boca Raton. I have to be quick on this one because I'm not really allowed to vlog from here. But behind me is Florida Atlantic University. Now the land that this university was built on was part of that U.S. Army Air Corps base from back in the 1940s where they had the radar training station that I told you about earlier. In the 1960s it was opened and became the fifth public university here in the state of Florida. And uh, Joanna graduated here with her degree in special education about six years ago. Uh, it's a fantastic school, has an enrollment of about 30,000 people. Beautiful campus. All right, everybody, I think I'm going to wrap this up from Boca Raton. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the look at my hometown. I certainly enjoyed seeing your local areas during the lockdowns. I hope you'll continue to shoot around there from time to time because it was uh, fascinating to get to see where everybody lives and their, their immediate surroundings. All right, thank you all for tuning in. And if you're new to my channel and you liked what you saw, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Love to have you along for the landscape photography adventures. All right, everybody, have a great week. Stay safe out there and we'll talk to you next Monday. Bye.